Welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Shall we start? Yeah. 68-year-old male presented to ER with complaints of fever since three days, dysuria and right-sided scrotal pain since one day. On initial 10-second assessment, airway patent, breathing respiratory rate 16 per minute, saturation 98, circulation BP 160 bar 80, pulse rate 96, disability uh, GCS full, pu pupils bilaterally equal and reacting. Temperature was 101.3 uh, degree Fahrenheit and GRBS 198. Pain score was 8 by 10. So, an injection PCM 1 gram IV stat was given. Adjuncts to primary survey, we have done a CBC CRP point of care. So, what, uh, what are the definitive indications for giving injection PCM? So, this patient uh, had pain. pain. Pain score was 8 by 10. Right. So that's why we gave PCM. So, when not will you give injection PCM? Only in case of emergencies, only we are supposed to give injection paracetamol. Mm. Which all are they? Um, by the pain score, more than. Ah, based on pain score, we can give paracetamol. Okay. But uh, uh, when will you give IV? We can give oral also, right? Mm -hmm. um, very high temperatures within. Above what? Uh, so it, it can be uh, because of uh, any febrile seizures. Okay. Patient with febrile seizures, if we have an IV cannula, we can give injection paracetamol as injection mm -hmm. because in such cases we won't be able to give tablets and all mm -hmm. okay then uh, fever in case of pregnancy because in uh, pregnancy especially towards uh, if the patient is in labor and all because maternal tachycardia can cause fetal tachycardia mm -hmm. so we don't want that to happen so we can give injection paracetamol then in case of acute stroke and in case of acute mi uh, fever can cause uh, worsening of patients, uh, mortality is high for them. So, in such scenarios, we will have to give injection paracetamol. Other all cases, we can give it as a tablet. Okay. Uh, adjuncts to primary survey, uh, we have done a CBC CRP point of care which showed WBC total count was 22,000 uh, and CRP was 181.3 um, and, and pain reassessed, uh, the pain reduced to 3 by 10. Uh, also, urine routine was sent which showed pus cells of 10 to 15. History, 68-year-old uh, male, known case of diabetic, hypertension, CAD, dyslipidemia, old CVA and post above knee amputation presented to ER with complaints of fever since 3 days. It was high grade and was associated with chills and rigors. Since one day, patient is having complaints of right-sided scrotal pain and dysuria. Also, history of lower abdominal pain was present. Uh, there was increased frequency of micturition and feeling of incomplete voiding. No history of any trauma to scrotum, hematuria, loin to groin pain or any physical exercises. On examination, um, per abdomen, lower abdominal tenderness was present. Other systems were within normal limit. Scrotal examination on inspection, bilateral scrotum was um, erythematous and no ulcers were present. On palpation, warmth was present, tenderness was present both right more than left. Pain relieved on elevation of the right sided testis. Cremastic reflex was present and no lymph nodes were palpable. Uh, so, a provisional diagnosis of epididymo orchitis was done. Mm. So, what are the, you got some findings. So, how can you attribute these findings to epididymo orchitis? Uh, epididymo orchitis is the infection of the epididymis and the testis. So, mm. uh, signs of inf inflammation will be present though, redness and uh, tenderness and warmth was present. And um, the position of the testis was vertical, it's a, so we had to not not horizontal like in uh, torsion testis. Mm. Um, then uh, the torsion uh, testis, it will be transverse, transverse, transverse position. Transverse what position. is that called as bell clamber deformity? Mm -hmm. It will be tossing and it will be looking as a it in a horizontal plane mm -hmm. when you it will it will be looking in a transverse like position mm -hmm. will be there. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the pain was relieved on elevation of the testis. Mm. Uh, that is in uh, in epididymo orchitis. Mm. What is that sign known as? Prehensile. sign. So, uh, 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 so it, it will the pain will get relieved if it is epididymo orchitis. Whereas in case of torsion, what will happen? <coughs> pain will not get relieved uh, even after. Um, so, uh, one way to reduce pain in epididymo orchitis is to keep the scrotal give support. a scrotal support and uh, keep the scrotum in an elevated position. Mm -hmm. So that pain will not subside if it is a torsion. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, cremastic reflex was present. Mm. 
uh, in torsion there will be it will be absent mm. all these signs in case of torsion like the present sign the um, cremastic reflex it is not very specific in torsion that these things will be negative mm. but uh, it is mostly told that it will be yeah, negative. negative that's why we are telling this so uh, cremastic reflex how will you elicit that um, give reflex and uh, scra- uh, give a scrape at the medial side of the thigh then this testis and scrotum will this contract mm. of so, the same side so supramedial aspect give a stroke so it will uh, it will elevate it. okay so th- that will be normal in case of epidermoarthritis okay, yes. mm. okay okay what are the other differential diagnosis in a patient with scrotal pain um, can be t- first is uh, to we had to roll out a torsion testis mm. uh, because if you miss the case then it will be infarction of the testis Mm. So, uh, we, uh, uh, testicular torsion is an emergency. emergency. So, if the pain, if the patient is coming within six hours, uh, then we can do an emergency Doppler. And if the Doppler is suggestive of torsion, then um, we can tell mm-hmm. at least patient came in the window period because mm-hmm. six hours is the window period. Mm-hmm. So if the patient is coming after six hours, uh, uh, we can't give a good prognosis to the patient if it is diagnosed as torsion because it passed six hours. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that is one of the most important emergency, testicular torsion then. Uh, any trauma to scrotum or mm. testis, um, any malignancies. Mm. This, is, this patient is having 68 years, so malignancies, malignancies can be there. Mm. Torsion of the appendixes of the testis. Mm. Appendix torsion. Then Epidermoarchitis and even orchitis. Okay. Why do you tell it as epidermoarchitis instead of epididymitis or orchitis? Mm. When is orchitis seen? Any trauma. Ah, trauma. Then in case of children, when not? Mums, mums. Mums. Mums will see orchitis. Mm. Mm. Or any other infection, viral infections like Epstein-Barr virus infection, mm. we will be seeing orchitis. Mm. Uh, Whereas in case of elderly, what will happen is there is a sulcus between the epidermis and orc, uh, epidermis and epidermite and the testis separating them. That will get obliterated and whatever inflammation that happens to the uh, um, testis will get transmitted to the epidermitis and epi- whatever inflammation will happen to the epidermitis will go to the testis also. So, uh, epidermoarchitis as a combination will usually happen only in case of adult. Whereas in children and young adults and all, it will be in a, okay. in an isolated part. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. How did you evaluate? Uh, we had done a UST abdomen pelvis with scrotum. Mm. Uh, prostate megaly was present, 35 cc, and uh, other features suggesting of bilateral epididymo orchitis, right more than left. And we had done a urine culture and sensitivity, and it had showing E. coli uh, with colony count of one lakh colony forming units per ml. Uh, and sensitive to uh, piperacillin and tazobactam. So, we had started Piptas itself and that is managed, um, it's IV antibiotics were given and then patient discharged. Okay. So, uh, what might be the cause of epidermoarchitis in this UTI. patient? UTI. UTI. What is the cause of UTI for this patient? Uh, prostate. Prostate megaly. Yeah. So, this patient, it is an elderly patient who had a benign prostatic hypertrophy which caused the UTI and UTI is the cause of epidermoarchitis in this patient. Okay. Whereas in young patient and all, what will be the cause of epidermitis? Uh, STDs. Mm, sexually transmitted disease, especially, especially anal intercourse and all will be having more chance. Yes. So, uh, which all are or- the organisms which will cause? Chlamydia. Mm. And? Uh, Mostly chlamydia and gonorrhea. Gonorrhea will cause. Okay. Uh, then uh, in elderly individuals, most common cause is any urinary tract infection. Okay. Uh, uh, such uh, thus, such individuals are prone for gram-negative organisms. Like this patient is having E. coli. E. coli. Then E. coli Cle- or Klebsiella. Klebsiella. Okay. These are the other positive organisms. Okay. So uh, w- when will you decide whether the patient requires admission or not? Uh, if there are any features of yes, sepsis, any systemic age of any systemic problems if you are suspecting, you will have to do. If the patient is having um, tenderness, swelling that is rapidly progressing, 
which can going to which can infiltrate and come out through the skin causing a fornious gangrene mm -hmm. such cases also you will have to admit and see mm -hmm. okay uh, or anything else like a, uh, or based on the patient's comorbidities if the patient is having a renal failure or any other things based on that we are deciding on admission but mostly epidermorchitis can be treated based on a op basis mm -hmm. okay so um, this patient had a um, complicated UTA because BPH contributing a urinary tract infection mm -hmm. along with that epidermal orchitis is there. That's why you started on piperacillin tazobactam. If it was a, a stable patient, what will you do? Fluoroquinolones can be started mm. if it is not sexually transmitted. Mm. Um, then if sexually transmitted, we can also start doxycyclines also. Mm. So, uh, uh, so if uh, this this same individual is coming with epidermal orchitis, uh, stable patient. So, what antibiotic will you choose? Ofloxacin. Mm. Dose. Uh, Two hundred of uh, three hundred mg BD mm. orally for, for two weeks. Uh, for at least ten to fourteen Depends. days. Then um, another flu. Uh, Cicrofloxacin. Uh, either you can choose, of, you told of fluoxacin or you can choose um, this one, levofloxacin can be choose. Levofloxacin but the dose is 500 milligram, mm. once in a day for 10 to 14 days. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, uh, when will you not start fluoroquinolones? Seizure history. This is an elderly individual. So, if they have a past history of seizure disorder or any history of seizure, um, we are not supposed to start because it will reduce the seizure threshold of the patient. Okay. Um, otherwise, you can start. Uh, why we are choosing uh, fluoroquinolones itself in case of epidermal orchitis? Gram negative. Gram negative coverage is there. Uh, all gram negative covering antibiotics might not uh, uh, infiltrate and might not have an effect on the testis and mm -hmm. the epidermis. That's why, uh, but fluoroquinolones is having that. That's why we are choosing fluoroquinolones. Okay. Uh, whereas if it is a young individual, you will be suspecting sexually transmitted. Then so what all antibiotics will you start? You can start doxy mm. or uh, ceftriaxone. Doxy, <coughs> what is the dose? Doxycycline. 100 mg. 100 mg oral per oral BD for 10 days mm. or ceftriaxone 200, 250 mg uh, IM chemical. IM stat injections, injections. Yeah, can be given. Okay, okay. Uh, anything else? Okay, thank you.